Hello! I bought another camera. So it's been a year since I started my analog photography pilgrimage, process, journey, whatever. And when I started that journey, I said I was going to buy my, my pinhole camera, I was going to go take pictures of waterfalls, that was it. That was it. That's all the analog photography I'm going to do because analog photography is a giant money pit. And then in the last video I did, you guys saw me, you, I took apart an old camera, I made another pinhole camera. I said, that's okay, that's, that's within spec, you know, just another pinhole camera. Uh, but the thing is that I really liked that camera that I took apart and murdered and then gave away. And uh, I, I bought another one. I bought another one to actually shoot it, not to murder it. I bought a Zeiss Icon Netar 515 slash 16. And it is awesome. So when you buy these old folding cameras, there's a lot to be wary of. And um, I found this one on eBay uh, from the UK, actually. And the reason I got this one was because it had all the features that I wanted. Um, this is a 6x6 folding medium format camera. Uh, so it shoots square format. There is no range finder. There's no way to focus this camera other than saying, I guess you're about 10 feet away, and then setting the dial on the lens to 10 feet. Uh, of course, it's all manual exposure. You have to cock the shutter each time before you shoot it, uh, which I think is just it's absolutely charming. And I'm not gonna I'm not gonna destroy this one. I'm gonna actually use it as a camera. So the features that I wanted, uh, I wanted a small folding medium format camera so I could take it on adventures with me. I did not want a Hasselblad uh, or an RB67 or whatever. Uh, I wanted something I could fold up and put in my pocket. Um, I did not even want. <laughs> I didn't even want, what, what intrigued me about the Netar that I destroyed was the flip up viewfinder. I didn't even want the enclosed viewfinder. I don't, that's too complicated for me. I wanted a camera that would be as close to shooting a pinhole camera as possible, but with like apertures and shutter speeds and stuff. So um, the other thing I really like about this is the, is the film advance, the manual film advance there. It's just, it's just a thing of beauty. Um, and it's got the nice little window for the for the film numbers. It's it's just a, an incredibly well made medium format folder. That said, as well made as these cameras were, this one is about seventy years old, and it's a it's a spring chicken compared to some of its uh, compatriots. And you got to be real careful uh, with old folding cameras. One thing that goes wrong is the. Uh, lens does not stay in parallel plane with the focal plane. Um, and so there's not really any way to know from looking at pictures on eBay if that's going to be a problem. I don't think it's going to be a problem with this one. Um, the lenses can have fungus and haze. You can have leaks in the bellows. In fact, I would be surprised, I've already checked it, but I would, I would be surprised if there's not light leaks in these bellows somewhere. Um, and the shutters don't work a lot of the time. So you got to be careful. I picked this one up because it had the features I wanted. It was the model that I wanted, uh, but it was the newest one I could find. So it, this is a post-war camera, probably late 40s, maybe even early 50s, and it has a coated lens, which is amazing in a, in a camera of this vintage. Um, so ideally, what I'm looking for is a camera to shoot my moody landscapes um, and I'll be using it stopped way down f11, f16, f22. Um, so what I'm going to do today is run a roll of film through this camera and test the sharpness at different apertures. I'm going to shoot something that doesn't move, um, that has a lot of texture in it. Focus with my, uh, with my digital camera, transfer the distance over to the distance dial here. Uh, anyway, you'll see what we're going to do. Uh, but what I'm, the, the goal of this roll of film is to test to see if there's any leaks, to test to see if the exposures are consistent, and to test to see if the lens has any weird issues. Like if it's sharp at one aperture but not at another, which can happen in these old timey cameras, They, depending on how far you stop down the lens. Anyway, I'm not expecting the corners to be sharp. This is not a Hasselblad. This is not, this is not a camera that's supposed to shoot magazine covers. 
Um, but for what I want, which is basically a pinhole camera with, uh, with some amenities, I think it's going to be pretty cool. Let's test it. So before we get started, I'll just tell you a bit about the camera specs. Uh, this was a mid-grade camera. It was not high-end, and so it came with a lens called the Novar Antistigmat, which I think is like the coolest lens name ever. Uh, and this was uh, just below Zeiss, uh, Zeiss made a lens called the Tessar, which was their high-end lens. This was just below that in their line. Uh, it's a it's a 75 millimeter 4.5, um, which is pretty much a normal lens on the 6x6 six six format. Uh, the shutter is a, what, a Pronto? Yeah, Pronto shutter there, and it comes, uh, it comes with uh, <laughs> all four shutter speeds that you could ever want, actually. Um, a 25th of a second, a 50th, a 100th, and a 200th. Uh, what's most important to me is the bulb setting, which allows me just to, uh, to hold the shutter open. And then um, the aperture, of course, is also set on the lens barrel, and uh, you can go from all the way from 4.5 to uh, f22. Jeez, can I make one video without a giant storm, please? Okay, so I'm set up here in front of one of my favorite test subjects, a brick wall. Okay, so we're set up here with my Sony a7 whiz-bang mirrorless digital camera and getting that nice and crisp, looking at this vine that's grown up my wall. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna dial this shot in and then we're going to transfer all the values from this camera over to the Netar, and that's going to include the distance value on the lens. Okay, we're now getting EV11 over on the wall there, so uh, I'm not sure if this is really the best time to do this test. Uh, and we're back, but we're not going to find stable light on that wall because, of course, now the sun has come out uh, and it's shining directly on the wall. Uh, so I'm going to have to sacrifice my pleasing composition with that uh, vine growing up the wall for a boring old, plain old, regular brick wall. This is the kind of thing I used to do in like 10 minutes back in the day. I'm always amazed when I try to make a video out of a simple like film test, how hard it can be. All right, and there's our, there's our clouds there. That's kind of the light we're dealing with. And even this wall isn't perfect because it's got a little bit of reflection from, ah, from that window right there. So it'll just be a highlight in the test. Okay, and as you can see, uh, this dimension is not level, but that's okay because neither is my house. And we're going to zoom in here and get everything super duper sharp. Now for the fun part. Yep, looks like a brick wall. What? We're just gonna do it. We're just we're just gonna make this happen. Um, I'm ready to shoot, and we're gonna adjust our shutter speed to as high as it will go, which is gonna be reasonably close to one two hundred and fiftieth of a second. And our aperture is f five point six. Let's make some exposures. I'm tired of waiting around. All right. So frame number one done. Okay. Now, right now we advance the film. To frame number two. I'm gonna increase our aperture to f8. And then change the shutter speed to 1 125th. It's about right there. Alright, gotta cock the shutter. Done. Cool. 11 and 175th sure f16 125th ouch and 
Now frame five is gonna be a little tricky. We're gonna to go to F22 and we're gonna to go to the bulb exposure because the camera doesn't have anything slower than one 125th. Uh, and we'll advance to frame five. And I think we can just assume that if I just push the shutter release as fast as I can, that will be a tenth of a second, maybe? Sure. Oh, wait. I didn't open the shutter. Okay. <laughs> Perfect. I mean, how much more scientific could we get? Okay, well, that's it for the brick wall part of the show. Let's go take pictures of something that's actually fun. Oh. Hey, Pepper. No, where are you, where are you going? Wait, for, wait, Pepper, come back. Psst, come here. Psst, psst. Yeah, so cats aren't really known for being super easy to work with, so I think we're gonna go drive around until we find something that looks cool. Now, of course, none of this is like actually necessary. I could just shoot more pictures of a brick wall, uh, but I try to hold myself to a higher standard, even when I'm just doing tests, you know? We gotta go out and find something that actually looks interesting like the Whispering Pines Motel. Unfortunately, I uh, pulled into the parking lot and I think at least like three or four people thought I was here to buy drugs. So I'm gonna keep moving. And it's too bad because that place is really photogenic. I'll have to come back when I actually need some drugs. There we go. Nothing trips the shutter for an analog photographer like a broken neon sign. All right, we are rapidly losing light, but uh, I think we've found our next target. All right, just for fun here, we're gonna go to F8 and 1 25th of a second. Okay, second to last shot on the roll, and uh, we're gonna do this one at F11 and I guess like a tenth of a second. Okay, the light is all but gone, uh, but there is one more place I want to try. Although, man, we're coming back here, y'all. We haven't seen the last of American cleaners. All right, that didn't pan out. Uh, so just for kicks, let's cruise back by the Meth Head Motel. It's a good shot, um, but I am getting a lot of attention, uh, and I'm pretty sure that this is the place where they filmed all the hotel scenes in No Country for Old Men, so I'm going home. It's pretty weird to me that this is basically the way that I spent my 20s, driving around to sketchy places at night and taking sketchy pictures. No wonder I carried a gun. There is no way, y'all, that we're leaving this last frame unexposed. After all this, this is way too much effort for a freaking like camera test. This we gotta we gotta find something good to finish this roll. Pepper, you wanna be in one last photo? Come on, you look great. It'll be awesome. Are you up for it, Purball? What do you think? No? No? Met? Yeah? No? Uh fine. I swear when you die. I'm gonna have you taxidermied so I can take your picture forever. All right, well, I was actually uh, uh, hit with a stroke of genius and I got my wife to pose with the cat on the porch while I hit the whole scene with some off-camera flash. Perfect. Okay, so our first look at the negatives as a whole, very encouraging. Uh, so we're actually, because of the way this camera shoots, we're going backwards from the right to the left here. So one, two, three, four, five, and so on. Uh, it looks like 
And let's see, let's get into these brick walls here. Uh, and we can't test sharpness this way, but we can take a good look at the consistency of exposure. Uh, and I feel like they're all really consistent. I'm super excited. Um, this one seems a little thinner than the other, so a little underexposed. This one was the one where I tried to guesstimate a tenth of a second, so that's a little overexposed. And we've got Pepper on the mat there. Let me zoom in. What an adorable cat. And then uh, the shots that we took out in the world. And this concerns me a little bit right here. That might be a light leak or something. I don't know why there's this splotch. Uh, I'll have to go back and look at my notes. Uh, and then these others look very nice as well. Everything is um, really consistent and well exposed, uh, if I do say so myself. Uh, and then here's our final shot with my wife holding the cat. And as you see, we've got very little shadow detail there, but I was kind of expecting that. And the camera's a little wider angle than I thought it was, because we've actually got the strobe in the frame. That's cool. It's just a test roll. Okay, let's take a look at these photos. Uh, on the left, you can see the whole roll over here. And uh, this screen, of course, is the actual photo. Uh, and I've taken care to, uh, to scan these all um, as best I can in a consistent manner. So we're going to start with the F5.6 frame. Uh, and as you can see, if, if, when we look through look through all these, um, the edges are overdeveloped, which is a um, an error in developing that I believe I haven't corrected for because I mostly shoot cameras which vignette so much that this isn't a problem. I've never noticed it. Um, but yeah, it's quite a problem here. So Starting with the F5.6 frame, we see that the center is definitely acceptably sharp. Uh, the corners, on the other hand, not so much, but you know, who looks at the corners anyway? Let's check out the F8 frame. Um, Exposure is a little different here. And I don't see, this This looks like there's a little bit of camera shake on this one to me. Uh, I don't see an improvement from F5.6 for sure. Uh, corners might be a little bit more put together. Um, F11, here we start to see things really sharpen up in the center. Um, and then by the time we get over here to the edges, uh, I think I think we've kind of topped out on the corner sharpness here. I don't think it's going to get any better because that doesn't look like regular old softness to me. It looks like lens diffraction. So um, Anyway, center is very, very sharp. Let's check out F16. Again, a little bit, a little bit different exposure. So not entirely consistent, um, but you know, fairly consistent in that they all, uh, they all showed up. We had an image from from each frame. Uh, again, super sharp. Uh, and this is of course with no sharpening uh, applied. Get over to the corners, and yeah, again, I don't think I don't think it's going to get any better than that. We start to see diffraction starting right about there maybe let's look over here uh yeah yeah about there so this is a camera that um is definitely gonna definitely gonna hold up well in the center not so much everywhere else uh and then at f22 again the center is super sharp not losing anything to diffraction there um but the corners uh aren't gaining anything either so what i can draw from this is uh it doesn't really benefit the image to shoot uh, at any particular aperture. I mean, 5.6, uh, let's look one more time where it starts to get soft. Uh, okay, 5.6 has much, the corners aren't much softer than they are at the narrower apertures, but that softness extends much farther into the frame. Look at that. Okay, so then the actual field test part of things. Here's my cat. Isn't she adorable? And this was... Uh, this was shot pretty close to the minimum focal distance and just kind of guessing. Uh, and it, it's acceptably sharp. I probably wouldn't print this really big and hang it on a wall. Uh, well, mostly because the, it's a really boring photo with a, the door in here. But, uh, but you know, it's, I think that's as well as can be expected, uh, considering this is not what this camera was designed to do. Isn't she just, isn't she just adorable? All right. Pawn World. Man. Um, I'm not happy with this. And, and, uh, I mean, again, it's acceptably sharp, 
but I wanted this to be really sharp. And I don't know if I just missed focus here. Um, by the way, we're shooting with HP5, so you can see the grain structure there is, uh, well, that's that's dirt, but uh, but but uh, the grain structure is pretty coarse. Um, so maybe that's maybe it's the film being out resolved. I, I don't think so though. This was kind of a grab shot that I took looking back at the other side of the pond world sign. And again, I don't, I don't think I, this, this was user error. I'm pretty sure. Uh, let's see if we can find where it is sharp though. Sharp through here. Let's look at that texture. No, no, no. Uh, I bet this would be sharp. If it were uh, stopped down enough, I believe I shot this one handheld. Um, I'll have to look at my notes, but you know, I think I think there is sharpness there, but we lose it uh, about here, which is exactly backwards of how you're supposed to frame something like this. But again, it was a grab shot anyway because we've got those stupid cars over here. Um, this one concerns me a bit because I don't know what all of this stuff is. I'm hoping this was my hand in front of the camera as I tripped the cable release, um, but it looks an awful lot like fogging or a light leak. And here we can see, again, that uneven development is really a problem. Uh, let's zoom in. Plenty sharp. Plenty sharp. Look, you can read the hours on, this, on the sign. It says hours. Monday through Friday. Saturday closed. That's, that's what it says. I was hoping that would be a good shot. It's okay. This one would be a, a decent shot um, if I were a good photographer and, and, had, and had lined things up correctly. I'm going to have to go back to this place uh, at night. We got this car in the foreground here that bothers me quite a bit. Um, but again, when I, when I do my job and focus the camera correctly, that's pretty sharp, y'all. Um, especially for a 70-year-old camera. I'm happy with it. Uh, and then... The WNC Freedom Center, I think, uh, again, it's acceptably sharp. Probably as sharp as we can hope with HP5. I think a sharper film would benefit here. Um, and the, the overdevelopment on the edges kind of ruins it for me. Um, it could be an interesting photo. Uh, I'll have to go back. I'll have to go back. Finally, the last shot on the roll is the shot that I took of my wife holding our cat with off-camera strobes. You can see the one on the right here, and there is one on the left just out of the frame. Unfortunately, um, she's out of focus, and the wall is super sharp. So once more, user error, very easy to do uh, with a camera like this. Uh, I really like this photo, though, actually. I think I will try to talk her into reshooting it with me um, and actually nail the focus. The funny thing is, I, I followed the procedure. I, I, um, I checked the distance with the 50 millimeter on the Nikkor and uh, I just got it wrong. I, it was the wrong distance. And I took a shot uh, with the Sony with the Nikkor on it and, and that shot is back focused too. So, but man, look at those bricks. They're really sharp. All right, so I took the camera back out the next day uh, and I wanted to take some shots in good light and really see what I could do. Uh, and I'm, I'm much much happier. This is a roll of Delta 100. So this is a sharper film. Uh, and I don't think the camera can really keep up with the film, but it does a pretty good job. Look at that. Um, and this is, this is a, a church that I found. I was just driving around. Uh, again, no sharpening applied here. 70 year old triplet lens. That's pretty impressive. Now, of course, as we get to the corners, things fall off a bit and that's okay. Um, but man, those center details, are pretty awesome. I'm just going to quick, I'm not going to bore you with, uh, with all the XF data here. Uh, this is a double exposure that I didn't mean to take. Whoops. Uh, here's another shot of the church. Um, and again, I, I was going back and forth trying, uh, trying it without a red filter and with a red filter. This is without, of course, and this is with, and if I hadn't screwed up the framing, this might be an okay shot. Uh, obviously I was looking for things in bright sunlight, but yeah, I, Please don't judge me based on how canted this photo is. Uh, and as you can see, um, this is this behaves um, about as expected. I had to open up the aperture a little bit because of the filter. Um, yeah, looking good. Looking good there. It's also not framed the way I thought it would be in the viewfinder. So I think I'm going to have to do 
some testing related to the viewfinder versus reality. Um, uh, this is a stupid photo I, I took downtown. But again, pretty sharp. These bricks are much more finely defined than, uh, than the others. But um, here's, where, here's where I got serious. Um, actually, this shot is stupid too. Uh, this is a better shot. Here we go. I got serious on this one and put the camera on a tripod. Um, and as you can see, it paid off. Lots of detail here. Very, very nice tonality uh, and dirt. Um, this roll also suffers from the overdevelopment a little bit, but I think I've fixed that. And I'm, I'm still working on it. And that's another video altogether, my developing process. But I'm happy with this shot. I mean, it's a, a couple of boring buildings in front of some other boring buildings. But um, I, I feel like it's technically pretty damn good. Wish I had gotten a little bit closer and gotten the uh, concrete rail out of the shot there. But I was doing what I could do. Next, I took it into an alley. And I shot this window. And I think this was like a two-second exposure on the tripod. Uh, and obviously, is at a much closer uh, focal distance, you really got good detail here. Apply some sharpening in post, and I think this would rival just, I mean, pretty much anything you wanted to throw at it. Now, obviously, except for the corners. Um, but that center sharpness is really nice. Eh, it's okay. It's, a, it's another shot of this building that I always shoot when I'm testing cameras. This is kind of a process that I go through. Um, I'm, I'm happy with this. You can see that the grain is much tighter here than it was uh, with the HP5, and that leads to a lot more apparent sharpness, whether or not the detail is, is really there. I think we would probably see, you know, if you took a modern digital camera, you'd see more, more sharpness. But um, this, this kind of approaches, it, it approaches the limit of what I want to do with film um, and, and why I want to have a camera I can, I can carry around. Uh, you know, a more advanced camera could take more advanced pictures. This shot I actually like. It's, it's boring. I get it. I've seen this shot a million times before, but I'm, <laughs> I saw it and I, and I wanted to shoot it. Um, it's, it's there. It's, this is exactly what I wanted from, from the scene. Um, uh, and I was able to get it. So that's, that's the test of any camera, right? Uh, really nice highlight rendition. And of course, we've got plenty of texture in this tree here. I think that's a sycamore. I don't know. So then I had two frames left on this roll and I went, uh, I, I went into a parking garage because I wanted to find something interesting to photograph at the minimum focal distance. And I almost got it right. Uh, I focused on the headlight here. Uh, and again, use that, use the process where I transfer the distance over from the Nikkor and uh, you know, it's, it's, it's okay. It's a little out of focus. Um, and it gets sharper. I looked at this. Yeah. The, the, it's a little front focused. The wheel is closer to us and it's, it's sharper than the headlight is. Um, and then I took it back down to the street. I like this shot a lot, by the way. Um, uh, I think it, I'm really happy with the way that it, um, rendered the light coming in from behind that bike. Wish that truck wasn't there. Anyway, uh, took it back down to the street and decided I would focus on something at the absolute minimum focus distance, um, which I think was four feet. That was the, the minimum focal distance where the Nikkor and the Zeiss lined up, where they had a value for both. And I wanted to see both how sharp we could get it up front, which is kind of sharp. For a portrait, it would be fine. Um, and then I also wanted to, to check out the the way that it transitions to the out of focus areas. And, uh, it's pretty smooth. It's pretty smooth bokeh. If, if that's your thing, uh, this is not a camera for bokeh, but, um, I'm happy with it. I think it's pretty cool actually. Um, so yeah, that's two rolls through the Zeiss Netar. Now we come to the part of the video in which I say something broad and vague about photography. Photography is a resource battle. It's a war of attrition because everything is so damned expensive. Even pinhole photography, analog photography that's, that's like designed to be primitive costs a lot of money. So with that in mind, the Zeiss Icon Netar is a really good investment for me, for the things that I want to do with it. I didn't spend very much money on it at all. Uh, once again, about 130 bucks shipped from the UK. And while it won't win any sharpness contest with a 
Hasselblad or Mamiya, um, it is definitely sharper than my Holga. And it's definitely sharper than my pinhole camera. And it allows me to do a lot more. I think uh, from the little bit that I've been out shooting with it, it's really fun to shoot. I think I'm probably still going to be mainly a pinhole photographer, but um, this is going to be an excellent folding camera. Takes the same film my pinhole camera does. Can stick it in the in the uh, back pocket or in my pack or whatever. And if I come upon a situation where I want to, I don't know, use an aperture that's not f two fifty, um, or where where I where I want to to not have everything in focus, where where I want to freeze motion, something like that. It allows me to do that, and um, it's just a joy to use. Uh, I'm glad that this example is. I mean, I can't believe there's no. Well, I said, there's not a lot of light leaks. Uh, and maybe I'll replace the bellows sooner rather than later, but uh, and we only had that one frame that was leaky. Anyway, it's sharp. It's fairly contrasty for a 70-year-old camera, and um, I love it. I think it's great. Thank you for watching. Keep the ends out for the ties that bind.